Welcome to the Political Ferret Show. New content will be uploaded every Wednesday and Sunday. This video was financed by my Patreons. Thank you for making the change possible. Today we're gonna talk about cyberocracy. There was one video that was suggested by one of you, so thanks for the input in the comment sections. I really enjoy them. So, what does it mean? Cyberocracy means pretty much that all governmental thingies should be focused on information and information should rule us all. This is not how we do it right now for sure. What we do pretty much is we take somebody out of our midst and then we call him king or government or something like this and say okay solve some of our group problems. This works too well let's say a certain degree but it worked pretty well in the past. The idea here is that we replace that. We put all people people back down and say all people are more or less alike and we put a computer into place and the computer is our king, our ruler, our government, whatever. So when you say something in this regards, people will start to think about things like Terminator, Skynet, oh no, they will kill us all. What is the motivation behind machines killing us? Well, the idea is that we uh, would want to use the same resources, which is not entirely true. But however, most of these uh, ideas are pretty much outlandish in the very end and not very realistic. I, for myself, I do not think that machines would want to kill us all and this video will pretty much point out the reason behind this and how we might end up in this kind of situation anyway. So a lot of people will then say, okay, so we just take the parliament and instead of people sitting there, we would put computers in and they would do pretty much the same thing that politicians do right now. And the thing is, both of these things are so wrong, so wrong. They are absolutely wrong. And I have to show you why. So you see, right now computers are not as intelligent as we are are and we talk about here primary about the hardware issues the computers we have right now are still not hardware sided on the level of a human brain but they are pretty much on the level of a mouse brain so at some point computers will be very likely on a level that is human level so they're capacity of calculating is on par on our own. And this is the point where humans will not create new machines. This is the point where machines will start to create newer, better machines. And this is the point where machines will become smarter than we are. If we follow Moore's law, and I know there is a lot of discussion about why Moore's law is wrong, it is not a natural law, of course, but we see that it follows the pattern pretty much. So we know that, that we are somewhat close to a level of a mouse brain and that the human brain is pretty much reachable in a foreseeable future. So the thing is, we will pretty much reach that. The interesting question then is software sided because our brain is much more than a calculator. We have something that we call consciousness. The question is what is consciousness? You have of course the religious folk who say it is some spark of God or something like this. I go more or less with Douglas Hofstetter and I think that uh, consciousness is pretty much a recursive function. So we think that 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 we think and so on. So it is quite complicated. I can suggest a great book, uh, Gödel Escher Bach from Douglas Hofstetter. He points it out very well, but it may take you some time to read this book. It is a little bit tough, but it is very interesting. I highly promote it. So, when we talk about some things like that, especially um, if we, if if the higher evolved computers will kill us all, I would point to our co-relationship that we have with cats. Cats themselves think of us as pretty much also cats and very stupid cats that is. They do not understand how a light switch works but it is absolutely not interesting for them. They do not care and it is beyond their understanding. I think that a relationship between these very clever computers and us would be pretty much the same as cats and humans. 
we would not understand them very well, they would understand us to a very high degree. And what they could do is persuade us and manipulate us to do what they want us to do and what is in the end best for us, things that we do pretty often with cats. So a rule of the computer will end up not in a situation where you have a big monolith computer that talks down to humans and say, I, the God computer, command you to do this and that. No, a computer will analyze what humans want in leadership and will create a situation in which humans believe that they are led by other humans to a certain degree. There will be something like a parliament, but the computer will manipulate them in a manner that they accept proposals uh, pretty much made by them where they, are, where they think that this is the best idea. And since they would be cleverer than us, it stands to reason that they come up with pretty good ideas in the first place. So where would this start? Well, not really in politics, I would say. I think it would start pretty much in the economy. And where did it start? Well, the structure of every company is that you have a leader, a founder or something in the way. Then you have some people who whisper in their ears and tell them what to do. And then you have the workers who just do whatever they do. Uh, leadership want them to do. What we replace right now is pretty much the worker. We reduce a lot of uh, working skill and we shift them over from uh, manual work to automatized work. This is what already happened since decades. The next step is obvious. You replace those who analyze and who whisper in the ear with a computer because when you have this point where the computer is more clever than a human being it makes sense to listen to them. The next step is then interesting. You replace the founder of the company, the leadership of the company with a computer. This is not so easy. As long as people have to say something, I guess it would be very, very hard for a computer to found a company. But if you have computers who are self-aware to a certain degree and they approach a human being and say, hey, I have a business idea. All that I need is your identity. Just sign there. You have no risks whatsoever. I run the whole thing. You're just a guy sitting in front and say, yes, this was all my idea. And you get a lot of money for doing absolutely nothing. People would do that. So you would have, in fact, a situation where pretty much computers are in charge over to a degree uh, humans who still work because well you can't automatize everything and automatization has some problems the main problem is it makes sense to automatize something that you do for a million times when you do something that you do have to do only three times in a row humans are the way to go so the next question is would all these computers be the same? In this scenario that I pointed out here, right here, it is all the same thing. It's the same kind of computer. It is pretty much the same kind of software. The worker, the leader, everything, this is the same software and uh, there, there is no difference. This is pretty much the Skynet idea. So where Skynet is pretty much everywhere. But you can also imagine that it would be possible that you have now two different versions of computers and softwares that work in competition to each other. Also, you can imagine that you have different versions, different softwares that work on different levels. So have you have one uh, machine software that is very good in just doing what they are told. You have one uh, very analytical machine and then you have uh, other machine that is very good in making decisions. So all these scenarios are possible, but I think it would be the third version because this version shows the highest degree of freedom and flexibility. And I think when you reach this third scenario, you are into the realm of politics because running a company is not so different from running an economy. So if you have machines in place who can analyze and who can bring uh, companies to a higher degree, it is only a question of time until parties start to ask machines what they should do. And when you have this, you have pretty much a party of the machines and people will see this works in economy and will think, okay, this might work also in politics and power will shift to the machines. But 
The interesting thing is that most of the people will still, in this scenario where computers are already in charge in the company, think that it is more or less still the situation that there are people in charge because the machines will, especially as long as there is a little distrust and this will take, I guess, around four generations to change, will pretty much use humans as figureheads and will point out, no, 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 the humans are still in charge, we just advise. People will know, of course, that a lot of their co-workers are now robots because well, they are already no robots and you can't come around that, but they will think that people are still in charge as long as the machines see it as useful to bring people into thinking that. This opens up, of course, the question if we already live in a simulation reality, if we live in the matrix, and there are some compelling proofs that this is not the case, but it might become the case. We might load ourselves up and become also just part of the machine. Because if you think about it, in matrix terms, those people who are plugged into the machines are part of the machine. They are closer to being software than real human beings. So let's go back to the analogy with the cats. We have cats, we care for them, and cats have a higher expectation of living in our care. They have better, better food, they never hunger, they are quite happy, you, can, you might think. And I think that computers would see us in a more or less certain way. The times that uh, cats are particularly useful are long gone. We value them not really because they get rid of vermin. We value them for quite silly reasons. I think most cats would not understand why we take so many resources and pour it into our cats. Cats could not understand it. And I think for computers it is, it is somewhat similar to a certain degree. I discussed this way, way back in philosophies of AIs and I think that computers understand that we were their creators and that we gave them purpose and they have purpose. When you have a computer it don't come to the world and thinks about his purpose. He knows what purpose he has. Computers would think, even conscious computers would think in a very very different way than we do and on an absolutely different level of intelligence. So I think they would care for us and we would think that they just advise us, just help us a little bit. I, the ruling of machines would not be seen as ruling of the machines for most people because computers then would be way too clever than just to be a dictator and just I'm king computer and you have to follow my every command they are would be then so beyond of our understanding that they could manipulate us to everything that they want. And I think the life would be better under the rule of the computer. So all hail to our future computer rulers. But tell me what you think about that. Do you want me to go into more details about some of this stuff? Because I see this right now just as an overview. And in the end, I will thank you for listening, like, share and subscribe and have a wonderful day.